Lou grew up without a great-grandfather. He died before she was born. <laughs> because he was so desperate not to be part of our life. <laughs> he didn't fight in the war. Spent the whole time hidden in a cupboard. Furious he didn't have a diary on him. <laughs> when the moon landing was televised, he watched Coronation Street. <laughs> Lou's great-grandfather is so stupid, he once come home with a single bottle of washing-up liquid when the shop was running a two-for-one promotion. <laughs> Idiot twat! Got him! Got him! Yeah! Right, Luke's a bit of a prankster, and that's why he's given my rent money to a woman in Labricks. <laughs> but... <laughs> a prankster and that's why he doesn't know this but for the last six months I've been using his toothbrush as a vibrator <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even electric so I'm really committed <laughs> yeah. well I did know that so the joke's on you <laughs> This time I'm really going to roast Lou. But before I do that, you need to know what two things are. First thing, the parasitic worm. The parasitic worm <laughs> is a worm that crawls into the eye of a snail underground. A bird comes down, eats the snail with the worm inside. Worm procreates in the bird's stomach, gets shut out. That's the parasitic worm. Second thing, my Auntie Susan's favourite cooking pot. <laughs> this is a bit rusty, not good to look at, doesn't really work anymore, OK? So now you know what those two things are, I can finally roast Lou. <laughs> what do you get if you cross a parasitic worm <laughs> and my Auntie Susan's favourite cooking pot? <laughs> Lou Sanders' great-grandfather! Her is so pale when she goes to the tanning salon, she has to stay overnight. <laughs> when people meet Fern for the first time, they say hello, but what they're thinking is, oh, that's the colour I want for my bathroom. <laughs> Fern is so white, Comedy Central had to book three extra black people on this series <laughs> to make up for it. Well, firstly, I've been advised not to mention paedophiles, making it impossible to joke about Phil's glasses. <laughs> and when you have the glasses of a sex offender and the fat tits of a baby, you must just <laughs> stare into a mirror molesting yourself. <laughs> That's how I unwind. <laughs> Thank you, Fern. Fern there, looking like a trans Fred Flintstone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Fern was oh, actually... Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Fern was actually approached for Shrek the Musical, cos uh, she already has the accent. <laughs> They'd save a fortune on makeup. <laughs> I probably don't know this, but uh, Fern is obsessed with plastic surgery and the idea of getting plastic surgery. Fern has actually already had Botox put in her forehead, uh, which means she can no longer look surprised. For example, when a waiter doesn't call her sir or she sees a vegetable. <laughs> uh, Fern's also told me that she wants to get a nose job, although knowing her, that probably just means she wants to get fucked in the nostrils. <laughs> Brady, Fernie, Fernie, Brady, oh Brady, I'm just gonna keep repeating my name so I don't need to write a joke, which is a trademark of Phil's act. He <laughs> uh, likes to say his name a lot at the opening of sets, and it's nice that someone is saying his name with a sense of satisfaction because usually he only hears it in a disappointed context. <laughs> oh, Phil, you've come already. 